Hi guys, Mr. Awfulfuls here. This is going to be a full, no-nonsense guide for you to complete the Easter egg in the Shadowed Throne. I'm walking you through every step with as much clarity as possible. To begin with, for loadouts, I strongly recommend the Sustain Zone mod and Shell Shock because that combination is extremely useful for the boss fight. Also, Anything you can do to ensure that you're going to get that special meter charged faster, there's a mod for that. Or potentially giving yourself three guns so you need to buy ammo less often in the boss fight. Those sorts of things are extremely useful, so that's my recommendation for loadout. Sticky grenades are useful. I wouldn't worry too much about getting the 1911 because bacon and eggs isn't going to be useful for the boss fight in my opinion. And also... In reality, you're going to probably want to do this co-op because solo is just fairly difficult. However, this guide will work for solo players as well. Once you load into your game, there are a couple of basic things that you need to do, such as getting yourself the Wonder Bus, that's the Wonder Weapon in this map, and also activating the Packer Punch is going to be useful throughout your game as well, so get that done. If you don't know how to do either of those things, there is a guide specifically for each of them in the description down below right now and popping up in the top right hand corner of the screen, but I'll go over the basics just to give you a refresher in case you just need a little jog of the old memory. You need to open up to the cabaret, look on top of the radio and see the letter and number combination that you have labeled on there. So for example, you might have LS2. You then need to go to the church and on the right hand side of this wall, you will see a map of Germany. Somewhere in there will be a red pin. In my game, the location is Oda Spree. You need to use that combination to find the correct table to be looking in on the charts on the left hand side of this wall. So I'm going to the Oda Spree charts and then I'm using my numbers, which in my game were LS and two to figure out the correct band and frequency that I need to enter into my radio. So LS here corresponds to 44.7 and two corresponds to 70.5. But if you had, for example, ZX1, you would have 51.2 and 63.4 here. Go back to the radio. The left hand side is your band. The right hand side is your frequency. Enter the two numbers that you have just found on your chart and you should contact the Russians after a few seconds. The light will go green to indicate that you have got that right. Once you've contacted the Russians, you can go over to the flare box next to the corpse by double tap and melee it to open it and then melee it again to send a flare up into the sky. Now, this will only work once you've contacted the Russians with that radio. You should see a large blimp flying overhead, and that is then going to start transforming zombies on the map. Just regular zombies are going to start getting transformed, and once one transforms, if you melee it, you should get a bolt that you need, which is one of your Wonder Weapon build parts. A second Wonder Weapon build part can be found on the map in one of three locations. The first location I'm going to show you is in the cabaret, up the stairs here on the right hand side on this box. Before you move on to the next location, just to the left of the box here, there's going to be a small magnifying glass next to the briefcase on this bench. Pick that up because you're going to need it for later. Right, back to the battery. If it isn't there, then it might be in the museum on the bottom floor just next to the armor machine. It's resting in the bottom box just there. And if it isn't there, then it's going to be on the top floor of the museum on the right hand side just next to this body that's kind of folded over this box here. Grab that battery once you find it and head downstairs to the apartment's door by in the spawn area. You should see a blue thing on the wall that you can put the battery into. That will open a door. Once you've gone inside, you'll find a blue thing on the inside of that wall. Take the battery out of that side and the door will shut, trapping you inside. But then you can place the battery and the kind of bolt thing that we picked up earlier into the Wonder Weapon build station to craft your Wonder Bus. You can use the Wonder Bus to zap that blue thing that we put the battery into originally to open the door back up. You're going to use right trigger for that, not your left trigger, which is a bolt that's going to charge your Wonder Bus. But before you leave this area, you're going to want to turn around and zap the cash register behind you. I think it's a cash register at least, something like that, 
to see what code you get written on the image that is pasted underneath it. So once you zap it, it will open up and underneath there'll be an image with some numbers on. And these are numbers which, similar to previously, we are also going to now put into our radio. Once you enter that code, you should see that you have contacted a smuggler and thus begins one of the melee weapon quests. This is a kind of mini quest embedded in the main quest, which is going to get you an awesome baseball bat melee weapon. Once the smuggler has been contacted, you can go to what I'm going to refer to as the puddle area of the map. It's just beyond the cabaret before you go into the church, this kind of slope downwards, and you should see in that area a metal grate Okay, this is going to be a manhole cover type thing that says gas on it, okay? It's a manhole cover that we're actually going to shoot, and once we do so, you should see that the smuggler starts talking to you, saying he needs a weapon to defend himself from the zombies outside his door. You need to buy various wall weapons from around the map, so try the MP40, try the combat shotgun, try the... Rice Revolver, try all the wall weapons on the map until he accepts one of them and says, Aha, yes, this is the gun that I want. Because for all the other guns that you give him, he's going to say, Nope, I don't have the right ammo type for this. Now, beware, there's a glitch right now that will be patched at some point, no doubt. But if you try and give him your shovel melee weapon, it will glitch out. So do not do that, okay? Be very careful. Try giving him the MP40, combat shotgun, etc. like I've said. Cycle through all the wall guns on the map, and eventually, you should find the weapon that he needs. If it still doesn't work at that point, maybe try them all again, just to be sure, but then I guess you could try box weapons as well. Once he's taken a weapon and he's happy with it, you need to wait three rounds. So that's two full rounds between this round and the next round on which you can actually continue this quest. So if you're on round six, on round nine, you can then go to the gas grate in the entrance to the cabaret by the radio that you were playing with before and shoot that grate off as well. And again, I have to stress, it won't work, you won't be able to shoot it off if you haven't let three rounds pass before you do so, but what I recommend you do, rather than just zooming through those three rounds straight away, is actually spend your time doing some other stuff in the quest, okay? So we are going to come back to this quest line in a moment, but first I want to give you some recommendations for things to do in the interim between you putting your gun in the hole and you giving him the jolts. When you originally called in the big blimp in the sky, you'll notice that various metal canisters dropped down around the map. There are actually four of them and only three of them are accessible right now. The first is right by double tap in that central area, and you can fill it up by either using the wonder weapon on it, so literally just firing that beam at it and charging it up slowly but surely. Oh, and by the way, if you're in co-op, I recommend you take it in turns to shoot these rather than going all at the same time, because I feel like it's more effective that way for ammo. It's just more efficient. So... You can fill it up that way, or this central one, you can actually fill with zombie souls if they're nearby it. So, either way, whichever way you choose to do, fill it up and then make sure that it goes yellow. If it doesn't go yellow, try shooting it a little bit more, try getting a couple more souls. But once it has gone yellow, you are all good. That particular canister is now done with. We don't need to worry about it anymore. There is another canister just up the slope from the spawn area. It's in a kind of difficult to access area, but you should be able to go through this little crack in the wall here and charge it up. You can't fill this one with zombie souls. You have to just fire your beam at it. And remember, by the way, if you run out of ammo in that beam, you can get ammo back by using that bolt kind of special left trigger thingamabob that the wonder weapon does have. So... Fill that one up that's in the spawn, and then finally go to the museum, look in the ceiling up there, and fill that one up as well by shooting it with the wonder weapon. The fourth canister, which is not accessible right now, will be accessed later in the easter egg, so sit tight for that one. Another thing you can do while you're waiting for the smuggler to be ready in a couple of rounds time is grab the painting next to the woman who is passed out here on this bed. She's not a very happy lady, she's bleeding from her eye sockets, leave her be and grab the painting from above her dresser. Bring that painting to the cabaret and place it above the projector. Right above the projector, as in up on the balcony, you should see that there is another film reel kind of tucked against the ledge. Shoot it and it will drop down right next to the big pile of broken wood. 
you'll then be able to pick it up and place it inside the projector. Then, use your wonder weapon to shoot the projector and it should activate, casting a map with a green light onto the wall, the big red wall, by the leopard or cheetah or whatever animal it is that you use to put hats on for the side quest. Head over to the map and find the green light. Now, the way this map works is that the top area is the kind of church side of the map. You've got your museum in the top left, the cabaret in the top right, and then the bottom left and that kind of area is essentially the spawn and apartment sort of part of the map. Now, I'm going to be updating the graphic that's on screen right now to make it even clearer, and that updated version of it will be available on Cronorium.com, my Zombies Resources website, which also has things like a statue solver for this Easter egg guide, it has a Grod Crovy air valve solver, it's got translators for Apothecon and Keeper from Black Ops 3, guides for all the Black Ops 3 Easter eggs, it's all on that website, cronorium.com. So if you want the updated graphic, it's on there, link in the description down below. Anyway, what you've got to do is find that green light and then go to that part of the map. So if, for example, your green light starts off in the cabaret, then perfect, because all you've got to do is go around this wall that you're looking at right now, and you should see a little clown toy on the floor. That clown toy is extremely important because it's actually a soul box in disguise. Now, this isn't just any kind of soul box. It's a special soul box because we need to count how many souls it takes before it is finished. So your job is going to be to count each zombie you kill and each time you kill one, you should see a red arc going into the toy. After a certain number of arcs, so for example, you might have four in your first one, you should hear a completion noise. Kind of similar to in GK, when you're doing things to upgrade the shield and stuff like that, if you guys remember those sorts of completion noises. It's also a similar noise to stuff that we've heard in earlier World War II Zombies maps. Once you hear that noise though, or if you miss the noise once the jack-in-the-box just stops accepting souls, you need to note down how many souls it did actually collect. Then, you need to go back to the map and look for the new green light. You'll then have another soul box to get in a different area. Go to it, fill it with souls, count how many it takes to be completed, and then once you've done this four times, you should end up with four different numbers. So, for example, you might have 4587, as I did in my gameplay here. If you mess up and you lose count or something like that happens, maybe you accidentally kill a bunch of zombies at once with a grenade and you don't know how many went into the box, all you've got to do is go round the loop again. You'll keep cycling through the four locations over and over, and so once you get back to it, you can be a little bit more careful, retrace your steps, do another count, verify what you thought you got, and once you know your code for sure, bring yourself <laughs> to the safe in the apartments area near the sleeping woman and enter that four-digit combination. There is definitely a knack to this. I had 4587, as I just mentioned, and so I'm going to start off spinning a bunch around the circle clockwise, and the reason I'm going to do this is just to reset the wheel, essentially. So I give it a couple of rotations, full rotations, and then going clockwise, I land on the number four. Then I want to switch my direction and go back to the number five, because that's my second number. Then, I want to switch my direction again, so I'm now going clockwise again, and I want to go to my third number, which is 8, and then switch your direction one last time, and go back to your fourth number, which for me is 7. Once you've done that, and you land directly on the number, and be very slow and steady with this, because you don't want to overshoot, that will mess it up, get off the safe, and after a second or two, it should pop open, and inside is a dagger, which is a very awesome melee weapon. It's one of the ones that we need for the quest, which is really good, but also really, really important to know is that if you're holding this dagger and you heavy attack a zombie, so that's the thing that you might have done in the prologue way back, where you kind of dig the shovel into the zombie's neck and get some special ammo from it, that heavy attack with, I think it's probably L2 on your controller, if you've got full health, but you're missing armor, that heavy attack is going to give you one armor back for free. 
It's fantastic. So if armor's getting expensive, you just need to pick this bad boy up from the safe. You can pick it up any time in your game and get armor back. It's glorious. Anyway, that's a kind of tangent from the main point here. Grab the knife from the safe and then go to the church and... In the right-hand side kind of area of the entrance of the church, you should see three melee weapon molds in the wall. Put the knife in there, and you're a third of the way to getting that church door open, which is very exciting stuff. By this point, there's a good chance that three rounds have passed, like we mentioned a couple of minutes ago in this guide, and that means that your smuggler is going to be ready to be contacted. All you've got to do is Go to that gas manhole cover, like I mentioned, which is just outside the cabaret entrance. Shoot it, or throw a grenade at it, or something. And if three rounds have indeed passed, and he was given the correct gun three rounds ago, you should see that he's available to drop jolts on top of. Drop a bunch of jolts in the hole, and he'll tell you that he's then ready to go and be met at his apartment, or something like that, and he asks you to knock three times. Then you're going to want to go down to the Wonder Weapon build room and you should, down in that area, see a door that looks extremely suspicious and you're going to want to knock on it three times, just knifing. I don't think holding square is what you need to do here. I'm pretty sure you just knife the door and that will count as your three knocks and once you've knocked a couple times, it will burst open. Big surprise. There's a whistler behind. You kill the whistler. And then you find that the smuggler actually passed away. He probably got taken out by the whistler, but he did leave behind his bat. And this thing's pretty great as well. The heavy attack on this essentially sends a baseball of energy out in front of you. And it can chain and hit multiple zombies at once, which is pretty cool. It's like a railgun bat thing. But again, for the purpose of this guide, we want to take that bat to the molds that we talked about before and place it next to where we put the knife a moment ago by that church door. To get started with the third melee weapon quest, we need to find some numbers scratched into a particular area of the map. Now, I know of a couple of locations. I'll have any extra locations that get found for these listed in the description down below. The first I'm going to show you in this gameplay is in the elevator in the apartments. I think it's on the right hand side of the elevator. You should see it scratched in there. If it's not in there, then I recommend you check the museum, go onto the kind of catwalk type thing, or I guess balcony inside, and you should see scratched into the stone a set of numbers. And if it's not there, then you're going to want to go to the cabaret and scratched into the side of a wooden dresser, you should find your pair of numbers. Once you've got those numbers, you guessed it, you're going to go and put them into the radio. Once you've done that, you should hear some Morse code starting to play. Now, if you've never come across Morse code before, this might seem a little daunting, but it's straightforward, I promise. Numbers in Morse code are always made up of five characters. Each character will be either a dot, that's a short blip, or a dash, which is a slightly longer blip. That's literally the distinction that you're going to need to make here. It's the distinction between dots and dashes. Once you've entered those numbers into the radio, you'll hear the same sequence of numbers repeated over and over and over again, and they'll be kind of bookmarked or separated by a fairly short pause each time. That will let you know that you're back at the start of the sequence. You're going to want to note down the dot and dash combinations that you hear in each sequence. So to illustrate exactly what I mean by this, I'm going to play a slowed down version of my Morse code. I'm going to write out the dots and dashes on screen and just make it as clear as I possibly can. Let's listen to that now. Once I've got those dots and dashes all definitely fact-checked, I've listened to it a couple of times, I know I'm happy with them, you're going to turn those dots and dashes into actual numbers via a Morse code translator, via Google, or via the graphic that's on screen right now, and then use them in the church on the map that we used right at the beginning of this guide. Do you remember the map of Germany? 
we're going to use the magnifying glass that we picked up from that first battery location to sweep to the coordinates that our Morse code have indicated. So, as you can see in my game, I had the number 10 and then the number 8. They were the two numbers that I had, and so total, that's 15 Morse code characters, which make up my numbers. It's not 08, by the way, it's just 8, but 10, 8 was my set of numbers, and so I'm going to go... 10 across on my map, and 8 down, and voila, you should see the cabinet to your right pop open once you leave the map. By the way, to get into the map, you need to hold square. That's what lets you use the magnifying glass. Once the cabinet's open, you have a golden bowl available to pick up, and that needs to be brought to the museum and placed in a set of weighing scales on a table in the top left-hand corner of the room here. That weighing scale is going to be used to weigh a zombie's head, and to collect that head, we need to go to one of the armor machines around the map. Go to one of those and wait for a sizzler zombie, one of the kind of magma guys that are really, really fast to come to you, and then melee it. You need to be next to the armor machine when this happens, and if done correctly, its head should fly into the top of the armor machine, and then when you buy armor from it, you'll get the head in your inventory. You'll then be able to go back to that gold bowl that you just placed down, and place the charged head inside it, and you should see a pop-up saying that you have successfully balanced the scales. Now, if you accidentally melee the wrong type of zombie, and place a pest head down instead, it won't work. So, you need to make sure you're getting a sizzler head in the machine, and then grab it by buying armor, put it inside the scales, and once that's done, that pop-up will appear to say that you've balanced the scales correctly, but then there is a soul box for you to fill, which is actually the bunny rabbit just to the right of the table with those scales on it. Fill the soul box, and once complete, a drawer will pop out of that table, and you will see a hatchet inside, which is your third and final melee weapon for now. There are more melee weapons coming up. Once you grab the hatchet, go back to the molds and place it in the third and final remaining slot. You're then going to need to fill these with souls. That's more soul boxes. I know it's a bit tedious at this point, I apologize, but I didn't design the map. So, first of all, you need normal zombie souls. So you need probably something like 25 of them. Kill normal zombies near those melee weapons in the wall, and eventually it will stop accepting normal zombie souls, and it will switch to needing sizzlers again. So, for this, what I recommend you do is stop killing all your zombies, and just let the blimp above you continuously turn your zombies into sizzlers so you don't burn through too many rounds. Each time you get a sizzler, bring it over to the melee weapons again, kill it there, and then bring your zombies elsewhere, wait for them to get turned into sizzlers, and rinse and repeat. Again, once you've taken enough sizzlers, it will stop accepting souls. You'll hear a little noise as well each time, by the way, and you'll then need pests. Fill it up with pests. Once it stops accepting pests and you hear that completion noise, the door will open behind you. And this is also glitched right now, and this is very important. The second you finish the pests part, you need to notice that pop-up on your screen saying that you've opened the door and run forwards. Try not to finish the pests part while you're directly next to the door, because the door will swat you like a fly and literally insta-kill you. It's a glitch that I'm sure will get patched soon, but I wanted to give you guys a heads up in case it happened to you. With the door open, we are now on to the logic puzzle part of this easter egg. And this, in my opinion, is where it really comes into its own. Go down the stairs and use your wonder weapon to charge up the metal canister that is embedded in the roof. This is the fourth one that we couldn't previously access that we now can reach. Once that has been filled up, the door to this area will close and you will be trapped inside. So I highly recommend that you've got one zombie for this before you fill up that canister. Now then, this is the start of the statues puzzle. There are four stages to it, which each correspond to the four walls of this area. We're going to start off with wall one, which is the wall with three statues on it. I'm going to refer to the statues going from left to right as statues A, 
B and C. When there are four statues, I'll also have a statue D as well, which will be the furthest right one. You'll notice that if you shoot the statues, they start to get a kind of electric glow around them, and if you shoot them enough, they'll rotate. Now, before you do anything, don't touch your statues just yet, okay? Because I'm giving you an option here. If you don't want to work this out logically yourself, you don't have to. Javano has created a solver for you, which I'm hosting on my resources website, crinorium.com. And so all you've got to do is go onto the website linked in the description down below, enter the directions that your statues are facing. So for example, my first wall had statue A facing right, statue B facing left, and then statue C facing right as well. I enter those initial positions on the Cronorium website linked in the description. I hit the click here to solve this button, and I then follow the instructions in the box on the right hand side, which tells me which statues I need to shoot in order to get all of the statues on that wall to face me. Facing towards you is the goal for all of the statues. To reiterate, Pop in the initial positions, click solve, follow the instructions, and that should bring all the statues facing you, and you'll finish that wall. You'll then be able to move on to the next wall, but only once you've picked up the gold raven that will appear in the center of the wall and placed it at the feet of Barbarossa. On the website, click onto the wall 2 option and then do the same thing. Put in the new initial positions of those four statues. And by the way, you're going to go to the wall to the left of you here. So you're going anti-clockwise around the room, starting from that first wall. And then follow the instructions once you've clicked solve with the new initial positions, shoot the statues to twist them, and bingo, you should have that wall complete, you'll get a new raven, and do that for all four walls, and you'll be done with this particular puzzle. If for any reason this doesn't work at any time, then tweet me at Mr. Ruffle Waffles, and I will get back to you as soon as I possibly can. There might be a couple of bugs here and there with the website, but we'll get them fixed as soon as possible. Really, I mean, we've whipped this up in literally 24 hours. This is work from Javano and from Phil's fan. So props to those guys. We will really try and get this sorted for you if there is an issue. But it should work. It's worked for me in multiple games, so my hopes are high with this one. Once you've placed all four ravens, those gold ravens, at Barbarossa's feet, you should see a lightning bolt strike the statue and they'll all be scattered onto the floor. You are then going to need to match the ravens going in particular locations exactly that I am showing you in this clip here. So if I pick up a raven with a twisted beak, you need to find your raven with a twisted beak and pick that one up also and place it in the exact spot that I do, okay? This can be a bit of a buggy step because the ravens can kind of twist around and go into all sorts of funky positions. And if you do mess up, by the way, just put them all down on Barbarossa's feet and then lightning will strike again. It'll go red and they'll be rescattered for you to give it another go. But place them in the exact positions that I am showing you and be careful because, for example, there's one raven that's like leaning forwards, kind of. I call it long sit. And there's another that's kind of sitting back on its legs a bit, which I call short sit. And they look really similar, so be very, very careful that you're matching them correctly here. But assuming you get it right, it will go green and you'll be able to pick up Barbarossa's sword or blade rather from the base of the statue. Then go up the stairs in this room. On the left hand side, there is a weapon mold, which you can put the blade into. And don't worry, you will keep the blade, but that will open the door and you'll be back in the map. At this point, you're ready to go into the boss fight if you want to. But I recommend you go a couple more rounds and get yourself a bunch of perks, get yourself pack-a-punched weapons, potentially look into trying to get Jack in the boxes out of the box as well because they are extremely useful for the boss fight. Make sure you've got full special meter, make sure you're at full armor, all those sorts of usual things you do before a boss because this boss fight can be a little fiddly the first time you go in and that's why we're going to be making heavy use of shell shock and heavy use of Jack in the boxes. Remember you can always use the uh, hangman game, that side quest, to get yourself a max ammo or the Tesla gun, for instance, if you want that, or something like that, or maybe even a full meter, or anything along those lines, if you haven't already used that in your game. Guns I recommend for this are the MP40 as one of them, the wonder weapon you need, so that as well, but then also, if you've got a third gun, 
potentially an SVT or a Garand. Both of those are really good. LMGs like maybe the Lewis or the MG42 are pretty good, I would say, as well. Other really good guns are the 9mm SAP, for instance. That's fantastic. I went into it one of the times I ran this with the Flieger Force, the like massive bazooka rocket launcher thing. That maybe wasn't the best call, but I mean, it ended up being kind of good for crowd controls, so to each their own, really, but I do highly recommend the MP40 pack a punched with double tap. Probably get yourself some stamina up as well. I love that perk in this map. Uh, Quick Revive is kind of recommended too. And then for your fourth one, it's pretty much optional. Increased melee damage is pretty damn good if you're using the sword because the sword's going to give you that uh, AoE kind of burst when you melee with it and you use L2 as long as you're standing up. So that's actually enhanced by increased melee damage, which makes it even better. But you could also get Speed Cola or if you're feeling absolutely ridiculous, then maybe you would go with like electric cherry or something but i think that would be pretty silly i did it but it wasn't the best move in the world speed cola would probably be more useful when you're ready to go into the fight i recommend you try if possible to get to around 18 or around 23 something around there so that you have one round before your next pest round this is going to just be a nice way of timing a max ammo at some point in your fight okay so you're ready to go in Get all of your team members inside the pod right by the radio and look up. There'll be a red fuse in there and that needs to be shot by all of you with your wonder weapons. Now, it's only going to work if you've got pretty much max ammo on all four of your guns if you're in four player or just all of your guns if you're in whatever player. If you're solo, then just your gun, I suppose. Shoot that red thing and if you use pretty much all your ammo on it, like I say, you're going to actually get taken up into the Zeppelin for the boss fight. Once you're up there, a new round will start, so be ready for that, but straight away, start looking for an electronic kind of terminal computer that you can access. On there will be a green line, and this is the part of the Zeppelin that this terminal controls. What you need to do is get to the starting terminal, which is the one I'm showing you now, drag the white light, which corresponds to the blue ball of electricity, which is underneath you in the floor of the Zeppelin, drag that light along towards the locked door, which is blocking you off from entering the other parts of the Zeppelin. When it goes under it, it should unlock it, and then you can move on to the next area, find more computers, drag the light around on those computers, and continue unlocking more doors. Now, what you'll notice is that as you go up the stairs, you have a choice of going to the left or to the right. What I always do for this is I go to the left first, I go all the way to get those doors opened, then I go all the way to the right, and then I go back to the left terminal and use that to drag it from the right hand side inwards to the center where Straub is. Once you do that, there'll be a kind of quick time event that will play. Straub in the room has some interesting things happen to him, and then the boss spawns in. Now, there are three stages to the boss fight. I will try and be brief about this. I recommend that you, and if you've got a team, all of your teammates head to the original area where you spawned in, because this area is nice and open and gives you a lot of maneuverability for dropping your shell shocks. You need to essentially juggle your shell shocks between each of you, and if you're in solo, just keep using your shell shock and then charging it up as soon as possible. And while the shell shock is down, or while checking the boxes are down, use that time to shoot at the boss. But you will notice that the boss doesn't always take damage. It only seems to take damage in the kind of glowing parts of it, but it also, most of the time, doesn't take any damage at all. So you need to utilize the time where it is taking damage and you'll be able to identify that via hit markers that you'll get when you shoot it to really lay into it. And after a couple of minutes of doing this, and it does take that kind of long, and a couple of minutes of you juggling your shocks and juggling your jack-in-the-boxes, maybe popping max ammo consumables if you need to, all those sorts of things, and buying MP40 ammo off the wall if you need to as well. There's also an FG in here, by the way, but the MP40 is a little bit more accessible. But after a few minutes of that, you'll go into stage two, and he will start firing kind of ripsaw-type things at you. Be very careful of him here, keep doing what you've already been doing, and then in the third stage of the fight, which, by the way, should be indicated by your characters saying something like, we're hurting him, or something like that, he'll start creating a ball of electricity on the floor, and that's something that you need to avoid at all costs because it's going to zap the hell out of you if you walk through it, but other than that, 
keep doing what you're doing, and eventually the boss will die, assuming you keep laying damage into him when he takes damage from hit markers, and you'll have completed this part of the easter egg. But you still do need to escape, so get yourself and your team, if you have one, into the pod that you originally came into the Zeppelin inside, and once you're all in there, it will then descend back into the map, you'll be safe, make sure that you don't die when you land, and the cutscene will play. Congratulations, this has been a bit of a journey, but you've now completed the Shadowed Thrones main quest easter egg guide. I need to give a huge thank you to my teammates in game who were Mr. Dalek JD, Codename Pizza, NoahJ456, and JC Backfire, and Edgehead actually, and Newbie actually as well. So there was a bunch of you guys, but also special thanks need to go to Phil's fan, Javano especially as well, did a solid job with this one and star for being world's first with smart guy just congrats to all of you guys and thank you for the various helps that everyone gave everyone i mean this community effort has been really solid and this easter egg has been really well designed and really fun to play in my opinion so i've had a good time with this hopefully you guys have as well please leave a like if you've enjoyed this guide took me so long to make and i'm so tired right now recording it and i'm trying to get it out as soon as possible for you guys so fingers crossed you appreciate the no nonsense the direct explanations of everything in here, the solvers, all of it. I've been Mr. Waffle Waffles, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.